visual representation of where numbers belong and how they are relative to each other. So if I just place a zero here, then everything to the right of zero is positive, everything to the left of zero is negative, and what I'll want to do is define some kind of scale. So for instance, if I set some kind of tick mark here and said that's one, then all these little, if I like broke it down into some little tick marks, then they would be between zero and one, so maybe like half, 0.25, that kind of thing. But if I set this right here to be one, it's positive because it's to the right of zero. One is just one unit to the right of zero. And so one unit to the left of zero with that same distance, and I'm just approximating here, but this would be negative one. So we want to just define our scale there and then just kind of have roughly um, equally spaced at tick marks here. So this would be two, three, four, etc. Just a little bit of review of this number line. So, at the base level, we just need a zero, and we need one unit, what distance represents one, and from there, you can copy and paste to find all these other numbers here. But, remember that this number line can go off to positive infinity, so we can extend this however far we need, and negative infinity, we can extend this however far we need. And so, in between all of these, our numbers here are real numbers, so we can actually have fractions in between, decimals in between. We can approximate irrational numbers here, but it's just a physical representation of all of these numbers. So if I want to show where this uh, inequality lies here, what is this? These are all the possible x values that are strictly less than negative 2. So it's not going to be just, if I have negative 2 here, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, because again, it's all nice and smooth, and um, there's a lot of actual math analysis that goes into this. You can go really far into this, but um, it's not just those values. We want to show the entire interval, because we could have, for instance, negative uh, 2.5, we could have negative 2.000001, that would be, that would belong in this. So, first concept, how do we show this inequality? Well, we don't just want to start at, let's say, negative 3, and just put a dot there, and then do everything less than, because what about negative 2.5? That still satisfies it. So what do you want to do? You look at the boundary value here, this negative 2, and I find that on my number line, so 0, left 1, left 2, and in this case I'm going to put an open circle because it is strictly less than negative 2, so I don't include it. If it's less than or equal to negative 2, I color that in. And then I want to shade Line, just put a line here for everything less than negative 2. In this case, left is more negative. It's going to be less than negative 2. So I shade this. In general, though, if you're not sure which way to shade here, or if your expression's a little more complicated, you can take a test number. So let's say I picked 3. 3 is not less than negative so I'm not going to shade this way, I'm going to just shade the other way. So you can always just do your boundary and then check either side. But for this more straightforward case, it's strictly just everything to the left. So we can do the same thing for x is greater than 3. I find 3. Where is that? Well, I look for 0. Well, maybe you just see the 3 here, but in general, you can look for 0 and go 3 units to the right. And I'm going to do open circle again because we're talking about greater than case we're going to shade everything to the right because for instance 4 is greater than 3 5 would be greater than 3 3.0002 is greater than 3 so we put an open circle to not include 3 but everything to the right would be greater than 3 so what this really represents is if I take a number within this blue section here on the number line, it is going to be greater than 3. So this is actually a set of numbers. It's an infinite set. It keeps going. But 
but it's a set of numbers where each of those are going to be greater than three. This is actually a set of numbers where each of the numbers in this on the number line is going to be less than negative two. Again, the number line goes to infinity and negative infinity, so just because it looks like the light blue here is like smaller, it's actually not a smaller interval than this one. It just keeps going here, right? So now what are we going to do? Um, we want to find the union and intersection of these two inequalities. So let's do it. So let's keep in mind this idea of intersection being overlap in both. So if this is actually just all of the numbers that are less than negative 2, and then we want all of the numbers that are greater than 3, how can we find numbers that are both less than negative 2 and greater than 3? Well, you can see here visually that the green part and the blue part don't overlap, so there's actually no intersection. If you're less than negative 2, you can't possibly also be greater than 3. So if, let's say, you have negative 7, that's less than negative 2, then by default, you're not going to be greater than 3. These are actually two disjoint sets. There is no overlap, and so we just say that the intersection is the empty set, and we just write it like that. You can see that there's no number that's both less than negative 2 and greater than 3. So and that's the scenario. Um, for the union, we want the set of numbers or the inequality or interval of numbers that are either less than negative 2 or greater than 3. Now, I think where things get kind of confusing or tricky is um, actually not this scenario, but when the two intervals themselves or when the two sets or specifically in probability as well, if they actually intersect, because you're not just adding things that are distinct, you might be double counting some parts, but in this particular case, we're saying, what is the interval or set of all numbers that are either less than negative 2 or greater than 3? We don't have to worry about double counting per se, but we'll get into like an actual example with this. In this case, though, for union, you basically want this interval plus this interval. So we can use this union notation, which I guess I should note here. Usually for intersection, we have this notation, and for union, we have this notation if we're talking about intervals here or sets. Um, so basically here we would have x is less than negative 2 union x is greater than 3, but using actual like interval notation, we would write um, negative infinity to negative 2 with parentheses to denote open set um, union 3 to infinity. Again, open parentheses to represent this open inequality as opposed to closed brackets like this. So we're talking about negative infinity, so between negative infinity, which is not a number, so it's always going to be open for that, but between negative infinity up to negative 2, and then union from 3 to infinity. So this is the notation that we would use to represent the union. So notice that the union is this set that is, it's, it's the interval or the total set. I mean, I use these intervals this idea of interval and sets interchangeably because essentially they're the same but you when you union it it's this it's this thing it's the set that represents being either in this or this so for instance if i have the number five is five less than negative two or greater than three and when i ask that i don't mean like this one or this one i'm talking about yes or no is it part of this thing, this union set that um, that combines these two together, that joins them together, that adds them together? And the answer would be yes, because it is greater than 3, 5 is greater than 3, and therefore it's part of this new union thing. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. So if you're saying, like, is it part of the union, you're joining them together, and you're saying, okay, if I have 
have some number and it's either less than negative two or it's greater than three, then it is part of the union. We'll look at the situation where they overlap though, um, but it is no different, just as a little spoiler, it's no different in this context. We just want, um, it's, it's kind of redundant to have an intersection part. We just want the general total here. Um, so let's just keep going with our examples and hopefully that becomes clear. So the next situation is, let's say in this one, we have them where they don't intersect at all and um, there's no overlap, but let's find one where there is. So let's just change the signs here a little bit, use the same kind of, well, I guess we can change up the numbers too if we want, but let's use the same idea. So let's say we have our zero again. We have one, two, three, and four. Four, and then let's say we have negative one, negative two. So again, if you need to take your time with the number line, that's perfectly okay. But I'm just trying to point out that that is a separate thing. So make sure you're comfortable graphing these inequalities. If you want us to do like a sleepy time practice, we can do that. Um, but that's like a separate concept here. So let's do like x is greater than negative one and x is less than or equal to 4. So let's say these are our two inequalities. So let's graph each of them on the same number line here to visually see what we're working with. So if we graph this, um, this interval, we have negative 1 as our boundary point. It is strictly greater, so we put this open circle we're talking about all the numbers that are greater than negative one, so that would be to the right. And again, you can just pick a number, anything here, so like two is greater than negative one, so we shade this side, and then you can check something on this side, so like negative two is not greater than negative one, so we don't shade that side. For this one, let's do um, purple, and so we have x is less than or equal four inclusive. So I'm going to include four, so it's a closed dot. And I want all of the numbers, this interval, all of the numbers that are less than or equal to four. So that's going to be everything to the left here. Okay. I know it's kind of hard to see now. If you want, you can put two number lines and kind of put one above the other, but I like just putting it all onto one. Um, Just make sure that you're clear with which part belongs to what. So in this case, um, we look at the intersection. Intersection. And we want to know what are all of the numbers that are both greater than negative 1 and less than or equal to 4. So that would be what is both purple and green. And that would be right here. Right there. So it's open um, here and closed here. So it's literally the numbers that are greater than negative one and less than or equal to four. And you can actually write this like this as like a chain of inequalities here. So X is going to be greater than negative one, but then less than or equal to four. And in this notation, you can do negative one gone four and then you would do closed to include the four and open to not include the negative one. Okay, so that's the intersection, meaning if I pick a number that is part of this interval, um, let's say zero, so you can see zero belongs within this, then it is both greater than negative one and less than or equal to four. But if I pick something on the outside of this, say five or ten, is greater than negative 1, but it's not less than or equal to 4, so it should not belong in the intersection, and it does not indeed. But then the union here, union, would be this idea of being in this or this. What is the sum of these, so to speak, but how do we get the set of or this. So what we want 
is if I give you a number and it is either greater than negative one or it's less than or equal to four, we say, yes, you belong in the union. So what we see here is all of the numbers can be in either this or this. So the union here would be from negative infinity to infinity, or you would just say all real numbers or however your teacher wants to do it. But um, here you can see that between purple and green, we actually cover the whole number line. So with just green, it's an open circle. Here it does not include negative one. So you'd be like, okay, why is negative one part of the union? Well, purple x is less than or equal to four is like, I got you. I'm going to include negative one going this way. So between the two of them, we have all of all of the possible numbers. So just keeping that in mind, the or we want all of the numbers that are either this or this to say, yes, we're part of the union. Then in this case, just because there is an overlap, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter. We're not going to go greater than negative one union less than or equal to four because it's redundant. We don't have to include that piece. We want just like the smallest interval that like actually includes that. So we don't need to say like an interval from one to four or negative one to four um, plus another interval of negative one to four. Like that covers it already. So we just want like the minimal interval or set that already includes all of those values. I hope that that makes sense. But the union of these two would then just be from negative infinity to infinity. Um, so maybe that can help is just keeping in mind this idea of the union is this interval, is this set that basically represents the joining of the two, but in a way that if some element or some number satisfies either one, it should belong in the union. And if it just so happens that it satisfies both, who cares? It's still part of the union. Does that make sense? Which is different in like probability. You have to consider different scenarios. You don't want to double count, but for sets and intervals like this, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that it happens to be in both. It's still just a yes, you know? Yes, we are in this or this. And if it just so happens to be and, that doesn't matter. It's still in this or this. Okay, I hope that that makes sense. So now what happens if um, the two signs go the same way? So let's say we have, um, let's just draw a number line again. And I'll just assume that we have, um, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter if we do like the less than or they're both greater than, but let's just pick one. So here we have the case where they don't intersect at all. Here we have the case where they have some intersection. And so now let's do the case where, um, but they're like opposite inequalities. And so now let's do one where they both go the same way. And what happens here? So let's say we look at, what do you want to look at? Something positive or negative. Um, I like how I'm acting like I'm actually going to get an answer from my camera. <laughs> but let's say we have greater than two and also um, greater than, you know what, for fun, let's do both positive. So greater than two and greater than five because there's nothing, there's no rule that says we have to like one negative, one positive, it doesn't matter. We can we can move these intervals wherever we need them. So let's say here, um, let's say we have greater than five. So let's just use our rules here. Um, so here we find our boundary. So that would be positive five open circle because it's an strictly greater than and it's greater than five. So it's everything to the right there. And then let's do greater than two. So we find our positive two and put it here. And we're looking at numbers that are greater than two strictly. 
said that's also to the right, right? So I know it's kind of a little hard to see here, but we have green here, which is that way, and blue here, which is includes all of that. Okay, so for the intersection, intersection, as long as you keep this idea of overlap and being in both in mind, I think it might help with these confusing weird cases, but basically you want the interval that contains the numbers that are both greater than 2 and greater than 5. So if I look at this picture here, if it's greater than 5, it's out here. If it's greater than 2, it's all of this. So in other words, if you want to try out some numbers too, it might help confirm this, but would 3, for instance, belong in this intersection? And the answer is no, because 3 is not both greater than 2 and greater than 5. It's not greater than 5, so it's not both. Neither is 4. But this greater than 5 is like this subset. It's it's part of being greater than 2. So in other words, if I have a number that's greater than 5, which belongs in this green part out here, it's definitely greater than 2. It's part of this. But if I have a number that's greater than 2, it's not necessarily greater than 5. In other words, basically all the numbers between 2 and up to 5 are not greater than 5. So the intersection, the only way to have all of the numbers that are greater than 2 and greater than 5 is to simply have numbers that are greater than 5. So the intersection is greater x greater than 5. By default, it will also be greater than 2. So that's the intersection, and you could write that as 5 comma infinity. 5 to infinity. Open brackets. Does that make sense? It's okay to repeat this a few times to kind of really understand what we're doing here, but maybe looking at the union can also help. So for union, we want this set, this interval, to represent like all of the numbers that are either greater than 5 or greater than 2. So as long as I have a number that's greater than 5 or a number that's greater than 2, I say yes, that's part of the union. So, it doesn't matter if it happens to be greater than 5 and greater than 2. That's just a coincidence. Who cares? I still say, yes, that is part of the union. So, in this case, it would actually be greater than 2. Because if it's greater than 2, we can have 3 and 4, um, for instance. But we could also have all of the numbers between 2 and 5. So, 2.00002 pi would be in here, 3.14 something, right? Um, e would be in here. So if I am greater than 2, if I have some number greater than 2, then it would already be a part of this interval. And so I can automatically say yes. And needless to say, if I, you know, have anything less than 2, it's not in either of them. So it's definitely not in the intersection and it's not in the union because it's not going to be greater than 5, nor is it going to be greater than 2. So the union is actually just numbers greater than 2. So all the real numbers greater than 2, which you'd write like this. And of course, then you can also switch it up a little bit with like both being less than, or you might have one that's greater than 5 and then greater than or equal to 2 is the same thing. Um, just make sure you draw each one and put a closed dot if it includes a greater than or equal to. It's the same concept. You just happen to include the 2 itself or the 5 itself. So don't let that scare you off. Just do the same kind of reasoning as you sketch this out. Um, and I think that pretty much covers the scenario. So when they are disjoint or when there's no intersection at all, what happens when there's a part intersection here? Um, I guess another scenario that's like a little, um, a little redundant is if they're both closed in, in, what are they called? Closed, um, inequalities to begin with. But again, like if you have three inequalities, you do the same thing. You just find the intersection of two of them and find that set or find that interval and then find the intersection with the third one. You can do all three at the same time if you want to, um, but, you know, you could just do it piece by piece if you have more. Um, I think that covers these different 
expressions. It might be this, but with a bit of algebra in disguise. So this is the base scenario, but instead of trying to find the intersection and union of these two inequalities, for instance, you might have to do a little bit of algebra work. So you might have 2x is less than negative 4, and I'm just going to try and make one up on the spot, like x plus 1 greater than 4. So your question might be, find the intersection of union of these two inequalities, and not you know, knowing where to start, you just kind of start trying to draw this on a number line. Well, what are we going to do? Let's solve them first. Let's break them down into our inequality solutions. So, because when we put this on a number line, we are specifically talking about um, intervals or inequalities with x. So, we should solve for x here separately before we get to this. So, I picked do on purpose just because this is just like a first example of solving the inequality. Here you divide by 2 on both sides, so you do this as you would with algebra, and you have doop, doop, x is less than negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, so it's the same as that. In this one, you subtract 1 on both sides, and doop, doop, x is greater than 3. Now, if that is confusing to you, then that has nothing to do with this intersection union stuff. This is algebra, pre-algebra. We're talking about one-step inequality situations. One step, even if you want to solve this as an equal sign, one step equal sign. Um, simplification. The main little tip thing that I want to remind you of that's related to the inequality solving is when you divide or multiply by a negative number on both sides, you switch the sign of the inequality. So, for instance, I could do negative 3x is greater than 6, and let's make up a fun one, 2x um, minus, okay, I don't know, that's not a fun one. <laughs> Let's just do minus uh, 1 is greater than, uh, why did I do this to myself, is greater than 5. Okay, so when you solve these, if you happen to try and simplify this, remember that if you divide by negative 3 on both sides, then you have to switch this into a less than, so shoop, shoop, this would be is less than negative 2. So this is another example of this in disguise. And then this, you would do two steps and you add 1 first. So you get 2x is greater than 5 plus 1 is 6. Then you divide by 2 and you get x is greater than 3. So you might, oops, you might have these expressions um, end up having solutions that are the same here. That's just open-ended based on your problems, that is actually all more um, algebra and pre-algebra. So if you have multiple steps, if you need to solve the inequalities and do some algebra work before you get to this idea of intersection union, then go ahead and do that. So depends on your question, but solve them, solve them so that you have um, an inequality with x and then another inequality with x, and then you can find intersection or union for your solution. So that's just a little um, reminder I wanted to remind you of um, with multiplying or dividing negative numbers with inequalities, having to switch the sign. Um, because as you can see here with our different scenarios, if you did the algebra part wrong and you have the wrong sign, then your solution is going to be wrong, right? So, um, but since this part is more open-ended and it's more about doing the algebra work to get to your in inequality that solves x for each part, um, then that's more of a different, that's a different skill, right? That's something else you can practice from pre-algebra and algebra. But what you do is you just solve each side separately so that you have these inequalities for x or, of course, if you have other variables here like y, w, t, whatever. Um, just make sure it's the same variable if we're doing the one-dimensional case here. Uh, we've talked a little bit about solving inequalities with two dimensions like x and y and drawing our lines and shading regions and doing a test point. This is like a simplified version of that. Um, so solve each part individually and then apply this intersection union thing. But if you want to 
mistakes here. <laughs>